Welcome to episode 7 of I am dumb and you corrected me in the comment section. It's been 7 months, time sure goes fast. So let's just jump right into it. Starting with too many stops. You asked what are the benefits of collecting stamps? Well, there's quite a few, like uh, getting memorabilia. In our case, we got Pokemon gold-like medallions, we got uh, booklets. You can also get secret tours or just overall tours, but those aren't like guaranteed. It's more like you're entering a lottery to get a tour. And the overall main reason for stamp rallies is tourism. You know, just going to a new place, exploring a new thing, learning something new about something like the apps that we have for manhole covers. They also tell you what the area is known for, kind of, or like why the manhole cover has that sort of a thing on it. Quite a few commented about me dancing on the street, because, you know, if I'm too afraid to even talk to people, how could I do something like that? Well, I made sure the street is empty, complete. There was nobody there. It was one of the later stations, so there's like no population there in the middle of the day where people are working. It was a ghost town. I, I triple checked that. Harajuku. Is Harajuku populated more by foreigners? Uh, I'd say half-half. Uh, Depends where you go. If you go to the main street, then uh, kind of, but it's also... You can barely walk there. It is, no matter what time you go there, it is full. It is constantly full. But if you go to, like, the side streets, then it's mostly locals, because the tourists don't really go to side street that often. And the side streets also contain, like, a lot of cool stuff. I'd say... It is, Harajuku is comparable to Shibuya Crossing, like the locals still use it and need it, even though it's a quite a big tourist spot. AI sake bar. Yes, it wasn't really AI. The AI part is kind of slapped on. It was more like a, a BuzzFeed quiz, like, oh, you didn't like this on a scale of 1 to 5? Uh, sure, then you like this. Might as well have found my Harry Potter house from a sorting hat quiz. But it gives a good excuse to uh, taste different kind of suckers. And I didn't really know there was like sucker tasting like that. It was very easily approachable. I like that. Also, why would I show a secret bar even though I'm not revealing where it is or you can't go there? Well, the main reason is just cool things, you know? I like to show stuff off. Maybe you can experience those things throughout me. Through me? Yeah, through me. All the things I do, I don't really intend for you to replicate or even put those in your Japanese list. Like, I do stuff that I like or just stuff that I want to do rather than stuff that I feel like you should do. You shouldn't do half the stuff I'm doing, let's be honest. Naked Festival. It wasn't about naked people. It was just an indoor summer festival. One of you pointed out that the naked is the name of the company or the collective rather than uh, <laughs> a type of being, which uh, makes much sense in hindsight. It's kind of like uh, Team Labs isn't just one building. Team, team Labs is a company, and you can have you have multiple Team Labs throughout Japan, but you also have Team Labs based uh, attractions. Like when I went to the Tokyo Dome, the Horror Mansion, one of those things were like sponsored or made with the help of Team Labs even though it really wasn't a Team Labs project, and those things are throughout Japan. Don't visit Don Quixote at 3 a.m. Now, here is where I learned quite a few things that are interesting from you guys. So you mentioned that the manager actually decides the contents of the Don Quixote, so every Don Quixote differentiates from each other. And that also kind of means that if you go to more touristy Don Quixotes, like the one that I went to in Asakusa, it has more touristy stuff because it has the sky tree next to it. And I assume if you go to uh, the Akihabara donkey, it has more uh, weep stuff, which it did. Though the thing is, this far I haven't really found a donkey that I like. They're just very narrow and annoying. But don't get me wrong, if you are a tourist, I would highly recommend going. I literally said it's a tourist shop. Therefore, if you're a tourist, you should visit there. It's fun, it's interesting, and you can find so many cool stuff that you otherwise couldn't. Like, quite recently, we went to Hokkaido. And Hokkaido is known for a lot of things, and one of them was the Hokkaido uh, corn chocolate. Well, it's not known for corn chocolate, it's just one of, like, rare things you could get there. But the thing is, you could get this in, in the donkey here. You can't get it anywhere else. Literally no other store has this, but the donkey had it. So, it's just a very neat place to find cool stuff. The main thing I was saying, if you live here, it's not the greatest place to visit. Like, even if I lived in Waseda, I had the donkey nearby and I visited two times and I couldn't get what I wanted. So, I've kind of given up on it. Especially if you have, like, actual 
stores. Raw dogging Mount Fuji. Okay, a lot of you weren't happy how unprepared I was, but I'm gonna say I was the opposite. I was maximum prepared. Like a week before even attempting it, I wrote down how long everything would take, how many stations there was, how I would deal with every single possible situation that could arise. You know, water, uh, could I get liquids between each station. I knew that I was a maximum of 40 minutes from water at all times. Like that was not gonna be an issue. If I needed clothing, there was raincoats, there was clothing at each station as well. Like, yeah, sure, you're gonna have to pay like 2,000 yen for like a raincoat and stuff. But again, that's why I said I took a lot of money with me just for that occasion. You can get walking sticks there, you can get food, you can drinks. Like you're always, I'd say like 40 minutes maximum from safety. Kind of. And again, when I arrived in the morning, I had my huge Linus Tech Tapes backpack. I had everything in there. And I was like 50-50 debating on taking it. But because Ramsker, who came with me, and I mentioned it at the end of the video, I only did it because he was there with me. Otherwise, I would not have risked it. Because he had extra food, he had extra water, and he literally even had extra clothes. So I was like, if worst came to worst, I would have still been safe. I could have just been like, oh, can you give me something? And he would have given it to me. So it was never really an issue. Also, I have done quite a lot of physical things in my life. I've been to the army. I know how my body handles the cold, the wind, the rain, how long I can survive without water, how long I can walk. The only actual variable here that I couldn't prepare that much for was altitude sickness, which I haven't really experienced anywhere else that much. So unless you're able to do the Spartan race and it's on the same level as Disneyland for you, we aren't the same. Spending a day in a wheelchair, completely uh, unrelated to the previous video. But I spent a day in a wheelchair. Couple things that I learned from it, aside from, you know, uh, stuff that I wouldn't otherwise, like how hard it is, how uh, all the little things affect it. The things you pointed out that I didn't realize was that if you were to take a train, you could let people know in the train stations and they would actually put like little plates down so you could easily go on the train rather than going over the gap and they would also call the next train station or the train station that you're going and there would be another person waiting for you there so you could do it alone versus you know uh, us just yoloing it which was actually a, a bit scary but you know still manageable also to be clear if i knew that i still wouldn't have asked it i didn't want to bother people um, i already kind of like bothered bothered people a bit but i didn't want to be a nuisance and one thing that i forgot to mention or uh, what was a bit of a downside for me was that the wheelchair length was pretty bad it was definitely not built for anybody my stature as it was very low it was hard to like move forward and the babysitter had a hard time pushing me because she had to be hunched over at all times. One thing that I also didn't notice that uh, was that the, when I went to the park, the park apparently had also their own wheelchairs that were meant to be used on the gravel. So you could have like thicker wheels and it would have a, been an easier time for you. But I'm not 100% sure how that works because I feel like if I went there already, they would be like, shot them up there. Would you like a better wheelchair? But nobody really said that. So. Uh, take this with a grain of salt. Again, some of you wanted me to go blind for a day, but uh, no. I can trust my muscles since I know how strong I am and pushing a wheelchair, that is just a physical activity. Like that's not an issue. But going blind, um, haven't really uh, developed any of my other senses that much. So if I lose my eyesight, I'm gonna be in a very crippling state and that would be very dangerous. And uh, there are, there are challenges that I draw my line at, and one of them is going blind. I'm not doing that. Uh, at any point, did I get scared that people would find out that I'm not disabled? Only for the first hour. It felt a bit weird, like, I assume people would be seeing like, oh, you got in the chair, you know, this is weird. But after the first hour, it kind of felt like, okay, like, why would anybody ever doubt me? Because it's not like I stood out even once. I didn't use my legs the entire time after sitting in the chair. So I just don't see how people would be able to tell. Even do while doing any activity, I just never used my legs. Yeah. One of the awkward things was, which I didn't show, uh, when I went to the restaurant, the tables were kind of low. So I couldn't really wheel myself under the table. I had to like take the leg. So, you're, so if you're a wheelchair, you have like plates where your legs go on. And I had to like pull my leg off of it and put the plate up so my leg would be touching the ground. Otherwise my knees wouldn't fit under the table. That was a bit awkward, but, but like still, everything I did, I just raised my legs with my hands and I tried to commit to the 
a thing. The only reason I went to Sendai. So I mentioned that the park had uh, Christmas lights up and Christmas uh, uh, decorations. But thing is, they had uh, some a Christmas in summer event going on. That's the reason. They didn't actually have Christmas stuff up for the entire year. Uh, my bad. Also, you keep asking me to forge a knife, but it's like $400 to forge a small butter knife or a kitchen knife. And if you want like a machete, that's $800. I don't want to spend that much money on making a knife. I'm, I'm not Connor where this is my full-time job. I'm not making money from this really. I became the Pokemon champion. As many of you, <laughs> that was a bit of a clickbait as most of the video was me saying I'm going to do the JLPT. Uh, and as per your recommendations, I have started Wani Kani. Wani Kani? I don't know how to say that. But I really love it. It's an interesting way of uh, learning kanji. The only issue I have is it's going kind of slow. Like, you can't really blaze through it or like learn more than you want to. So at the beginning, it only gave me five, not even kanji, like the, the parts that make up kanji. And it didn't allow me to learn more. It literally locked, soft blocked me. It was like, all right, you learn this for today, come back tomorrow. And I'm like, can I learn more? And they're like, no. And now, like half a month in, it's gotten much better, but it's still like, I do my dailies and that's it. I can't do more, even if I wanted to. I could like keep on practicing, but I'm only practicing the things that I already learned. And it's not that many yet. So uh, that's the only downside that I see right now. I also didn't see if I could pay to unlock more. because. I don't know, I don't know. But it's it's good for kanji, I like it. Visiting each and every floor. Uh, what a bust of a video in all regards. I feel like I've been through Tokyo a lot. I know there's buildings that have just bars, like floors of bars on top of each other. But maybe it's my fault for going to Akihabara, but I, we just couldn't find any of those buildings. We literally spent an hour searching for them, couldn't find any. Halfway through, we were even approached, like we were looking for buildings, standing around, uh, thinking. We were approached by very sketchy dudes who offered us to... Uh, Go to a decrepit looking building to uh, go to a bunny girl bar and uh, one of them said, oh, this, this is the boss man of the bar, you know, he really recommends it. And it was the sketchiest thing I've seen in my life. Uh, so, yeah, uh, weird. Also, the first place, the hub really messed me up. Not even uh, making me drunk. I just was sick from the flu. I was actually physically sick from ingesting so many fluids. Like I said, it was like two liters and I felt ill after it because I never drink that much like this is this is my daily fluid intake pretty much i it was it was bad it was like the wanko soba challenge of drinking i am not built for that uh, some of you also want to know uh what you've seen the drinking culture what about the cannabis culture or the cbd culture because there are tons of cbd shops everywhere and they also have cbd bars it's it's kind of weird how if you came here a couple of years ago there was nothing and now it's like literally on every corner you see that uh, cannabis leaf but I'm not really a CBD person I don't do stuff like that so I feel like I wouldn't be the right person to judge it because I'd be like uh, weed uh. Uh, and to be clear uh, by CBD it smells like weed but it's not actually weed it's the I think the relaxing part while the THC HTC no that's the phone company right THC yeah THC is a thing that makes you uh, go high, uh, which is still highly prohibited in Japan. Uh, you also asked if you should check a building out of luck uh, rather than uh, just knowing where to go. And I'd say, of course, most places also have like the board signs in front of the building or like on the bottom floor. So you kind of know what you're getting yourself into, like if it's going to be a barbecue or a yakiniku or, you know, izakaya. So it's, it's not... You get the very general vibe from it, but definitely visiting places has been an experience. I've had multiple good experiences just going into places at random and they've turned out to be really good that, uh, and places that I want to go back after. And there have also been places where I'm like, yeah, I'm good if I never visit this place again. So, you know, why not? It's exploring. Exploring is good. You never know if it's a good place. And you know, there's so many places out there that no matter where you go, somebody will have it in their list of like top 10 secret bars or whatever. 100 hours in a subway. Where is the random chair and table from? I don't, I don't know. They were just there. I thought it would be funny if I just sat down and started talking. Also, Inglorious Dane has been really quiet since this video dropped, considering they kept asking for stamp speedruns for a while now. What's up with that? Well, now that you finally got it, you have no need to comment anymore? I see how it is. Uh, let me tell you a story. 
So, what I discovered, uh, by some of your comments, the SIM card machine is free for foreign tourists and it's 500 megabytes, which, again, that is fantastic. I mean, 500 isn't much, but it's like enough for a weekend. You can still browse the web, you can get on a lot of very important stuff done. So considering it's even free, and the only downside is you have to sign up, uh, that's a win, I love it. Sapporo in eight hours. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the seals and the polar bears were separated by glass. So they, they weren't interacting with each other in any way. Also, you are asking where's the monthly recap for August, and you do realize I'm not doing recaps at the beginning of a month, because I arrived here on the 6th. So I'm doing monthly recaps based on each month I've been here, not not like February, January, March, the months itself. So the monthly recaps are going to be appearing on like the around the 6th, 7th of each month. Also, some of you said uh, what I saw was modern art and what I was thinking about was contemporary art. Uh, thank you, Tori Banashi, for clearing that up. And uh, 22 views? I don't know, man. I think you're, you're done for. But, I, but I'm like halfway through. What do you mean I'm done for? He opened a bar. Now, as some of you, uh, you know, uh, bright-minded individuals might have noticed, this wasn't a daily vlog. I mean, it kind of was. It just wasn't the day it was uploaded at. Because mo the main reason was Chris filmed his own video and I didn't want to publish it before. It would have been one thing if I went to the bar afterwards and made a video about that, because that's like, you know, what everybody can do. But I went there on the opening with everybody. And I felt like if I published the video before Chris, that would be kind of weird because like he's making his own video and it's it's his guests and stuff. So uh, that's why it took so long for me to actually have it up. And uh, yes, at this point, I am one day ahead of schedule. So for the most part, the videos have been uploaded the day of recording, but now I have a one day worth of padding. So I can dox myself and you'll not know where I'm actually am. Um, Yes. Also, I fixed my modem issues, my internet issues. Look at that. I discovered that if I put my uh, router outside, the upload speeds are gonna be like up to 50 or 60 megabytes, which isn't that good, but it's better than nothing. The only downside is the download speeds now are like 10 to 20. So if I wanna download stuff, I have to put it inside. And now it's like 200 megabytes down, which is really great, except upload speeds are now like five to 10. So, you know, if I have to upload, it goes outside. If, it, if I have to download, inside. That's how I fixed my internet issues. They're, they aren't issues anymore. Yippee. Well, that's been it for seven months. We got six more, five more, shit. We got five more to enjoy our time here. Let's make it grand. Okay, bye-bye. See you tomorrow.